I don't know how many people have joined already. Uh, but yeah, it's time to start, so let's get started anyway. So first, um, I'll start with uh, um, explaining how this is going to work. So I have a few slides to explain, well, to you know, present some content to get started about what Kernel CI has been doing in the past year. Um, and then there'll be plenty of time to discuss things. I'm not sure uh, what's going to be the best way to interact with people. We'll see what the platform can do. From my point of view, it's uh, just a Zoom call. I don't know if it's um, going to be completely interactive from your point of view or not. Um, but hopefully the chat will work as well. Can everybody see the chat messages? Yeah, I see Geese here. Okay, so that seems to be working. So if you have a question and for some reason you don't appear on the video, then please, um, <laughs> that's 17, yes. Uh, if some, <laughs> uh, there's a bit of inflation going on here. So if someone has a question and can't, um, um, show up on the video, then feel free to ask a question on the chat and I'll take it from there. Okay, so now I'll start sharing my screen. I have a, a few slides here. Okay, can you see this? Yeah, I think it's working. Okay, hello everyone. So if you remember, about one year ago at um, uh, ELC Europe 2019 in Lyon, um, uh, Kernel CI project was announced as a Linux Foundation project. Um, now, a lot of things have happened since then. So first I'll go through a quick um, review of all these things that has happened, things that have happened. So a lot of things have happened in Kernel CI in general. Uh, this slide is more about the things that are really related to um, the LF project or what we've done thanks to the members that have joined via the LF project. So um, to start with, we had to set a few things up. So we've um, uh, we've defined the, the, the role of the project. We, we came up with a mission statement. We elected some members for the, um, the board and the technical steering committee. Um, so that's why during the first three months, there was no like completely visible uh, results, but that's, you know, we had to go through all that stuff and uh, set up any like any project. Um, then at first then we had a good, um, uh, quite a good understanding already of what, what we were doing. So we could talk about a mission statement, what we were trying to do, um, especially common reporting. That's a new thing we've started doing with Red Hat. So KCIDB is the name of the project that does common reporting for gathering results from various test systems. Um, and Red Hat is a member of the uh, project, so that's why you know it's one of the things that may not have happened if we would, if we were not uh, in a in this in this LF project. Uh, then we started improving our infrastructure. So Microsoft, who is also um, a member, um, has given us access to some of their servers, and that has made a lot of things easier for us uh, for hosting websites and and these kinds of things. Um, then we also started um, moving towards uh, functional testing and the, the, the front end was re redone. Um, I think that was not really a Linux Foundation thing, but very much, uh, I think it, it happened thanks to the momentum that was given to the project to really open, open up for doing a lot more tests. Uh, then we did a community survey. Um, in coordination with several uh, several people in the um, in the board of the project, the governing board, and we got some good feedback, some interesting feedback from the kernel community. Um, I'll go through this in another slide. Then we also started uh, using Kubernetes. So we, we have clusters running in um, in uh, Microsoft Azure and also in Google Compute uh, clusters. You know, we, we we are using this now to uh, to build kernels. Um, so we have um, a much bigger capacity now, and we'll probably be using that to run all the tests as well. Uh, things that don't need to run on a particular hardware platform. Uh, then at Linux Plumbers. Um, 
there was um, a lot of uh, a lot of discussions around kernel CI, and I think you could really see the the impact that the fact that the project was really taking off. We still have a lot of things to do, but if you look at all the things we've achieved, I think uh, we were doing quite well from that point of view. Um, and one of the things that was um, uh, the, the accent was put a bit. Uh, on uh, common reporting and trying to get more people to send results. So we got uh, Google Sysbot with Dimitri. Uh, he worked with us to um, get the first Sysbot results sent to the common reporting. So that's another great step into um, having one email report that will contain results from the current kernel CI things we're running, uh, Red Hat, CKI, and, and, and Google Sysbot. And maybe we, we have a few more uh, down the path as well. Um, so on this slide, I've put um, a very quick summary of what the community survey um, told us. So that's already a kind of a first set of lessons learned. Um, so we need to do more to test patches, or we need to actually start testing patches that are sent to mailing lists, uh, because they are the native, uh, the kernel CI tests right now only apply to Git branches. Um, also, we should be doing uh, deeper tests with like longer running uh, tests that look for more things uh, to have a bigger coverage. Um, so testing patches is good for quick feedback, but we also need, uh, especially like for stable releases, we can run lo much longer tests um, and that, that's really uh, some extra value we don't have right now. Um, and also we need to improve the web dashboard. Not everybody uses web dashboard. Well, <laughs> not everybody relies on web dashboard, but almost everybody um, will be using it a little bit at, at one point or another. And if we have a good UI, then it can also uh, simplify people's work a lot. Uh, yeah, I have a quick summary of what happened at Linux Plumbers and what we uh, learned from the Linux Plumbers experience. So first I have just uh, some links to their recorded talks, which you can watch again on YouTube, the two talks that were really just about kernel CI. Um, you'll see actually all the talks that touch on kernel CI, like in the real time, uh, microconference and, and um, in the Clang um, as well. So maybe, and maybe a few more as well. So actually kernel CI was brought up in many different areas of the conference. So that was uh, really positive. But what we realized is that um, because of this um, interest in kernel CI directly coming from maintainers uh, who want specific tests to be running and they don't have um, a CI system at hand, they want kernel CI to do that. That's what we call now the kernel, kernel CI native tests, what kernel CI does directly. Um, by contrast with um, the common reporting. So, you know, when we gather reports from other CI systems like Sysbot and ARM have some test systems as well. Uh, we, we talked with um, uh, Sony, who have Fuego, and also Gen2, and some people from Intel who worked on, work on Yocto, they, have, they do a lot of tests there as well. Uh, so we can gather all these. Then if a maintainer says, uh, I have a special branch, I want to test, I want to run these tests, the other projects might or might not be interested or it might not be easy for them to to integrate that into their system uh, because they're focused on testing their products or testing one thing and they don't want to uh, diverge so that's the kind of that's the, the kind of thing that native kernel ci tests are about so if it's completely a, you know for the upstream kernel uh, a need from coming down, coming directly from the community, it makes sense to have it there. So they all complement each other really. Um, now I've got a, I've uh, gathered a few ideas on this slide as maybe things that I think we can discuss here, but uh, of course people might have already some ideas. <laughs> um, so. One of the first item is what I've just talked about. Uh, so how we can have native tests alongside um, common, common reporting. Well, uh, the native tests will join, uh, you know, the, the results will be in the common database as well as other results. Um, and then I think we can simply say that the, the purpose of having Linux Foundation project, as opposed to not having one like we, you know, we're, the kernel CI started in 2014, so or well, maybe even a bit before that. So for quite a few years, um, it was a bit 
um, ad hoc project. And now we have the Linux Foundation uh, framework around us. So for the project itself, it means uh, we have much more resources. We have a budget, we have access to clusters, and we have a lot of expertise from, uh, from, uh, from the members. If, and for the members themselves, uh, it, it's, it's a great way for them to improving into the upstream kernel quality, because all, um, all the CI systems that run for products or distros, they can feedback fixes, uh, but they don't, they don't work directly on, on, the, on the upstream. Um, so the common reporting is a way of bridging that link and also native test is to work directly firsthand on it. So if you want to invest into improving upstream kernel uh, quality, I think kernel CI basically is, is for that. Um, and of course, uh, we have some issues around scalability as we keep growing. Some bits are growing faster than others. Like we can build a lot of, lot of things now. We can start running more tests, but we don't necessarily have the capacity or the expertise or the people available to deal with all that as we keep growing. Um, so this is maybe where we, <laughs> we need more help. Now let's see. Uh, after that, so I've just put a, a summary here how to get in touch with a mailing list. We have all the code on GitHub. There's an IRC channel. You can see all the members. So we have uh, Bailey, Brand Civil Infrastructure Platform, which is another Linux Foundation project. We have Collabora, uh, where I work. Uh, we have Friendrist.io and Google and Microsoft and Red Hat. Uh, if you download the PDFs, you can see I've put a few more things after that, but I won't go into them right now unless someone has any uh, specific questions. Um, okay, so does anybody have any question right, right now to raise? Let's see if I stop sharing. So like I said in the beginning of the talk, I don't know if you were all here, but I'm not sure if you can just show up via the video from from your end. Uh, so in doubt, you can um, type a question in the chat if, if you can't reach in video form. I can hear someone. Seems to be working. Oh yeah, hello Guy. Bonjour. <laughs> I don't have nothing to contribute. I just wanted to make sure this worked if somebody else wants to chime in. And thank you very much for all the work you've been doing for the project. It's been it's been wonderful to watch. Um, there's infinitely more work to be done, but I think that the summary was really uh, encouraging already. It looked like more when you presented this way than the things that, that we struggle with on a, on a weekly basis amongst ourselves. So thank you for, for the overview. It was much appreciated by me, who already knew it, but needed to see it summarized again. So that was good. Thanks. There must be questions. I, I see the list of 28 participants. There are some people I've not met before here. So I'd love, love to get some feedback, questions, comments, concerns, input that can be contributed. A lot of the members of the project are here, but it would be great to hear from the others and people that have contributed as well. If not, I have a question like, what would you like Colonel CI to be doing for you if there was one thing to pick? <laughs> That's the question I did for, for uh, plumbers. It was people said, I want everything. But <laughs> if, there's, <laughs> if there's like the most important thing in your mind from whatever, role you have if you're a developer or maintainer or working on a product or something, what would you expect as the main important thing to be coming from kernel CI? I Oh, here's a question. So I'll read it, read it out now, just in case that's not recorded. I wonder, from Roman, yeah, 
I wonder if you plan to add any subsystem specific CI. Um, are there any plans or ideas? For example, like for SCSI drivers. Um, we already have some uh, subsystem specific things, especially, well, um, uh, not especially because we insist on it, but more because we've started by um, by doing things for uh, video for Linux and also for DRM KMS. Um, we also have a few more, uh, well, we're testing things in USB a little bit, but for video for Linux, we run uh, V4L2 compliance on on a few, on a handful of drivers, like, well, UVC on, on many devices. Um, and uh, we're, we're testing the um, the main branch from the media tree, but we also test this, we run the same tests on um, on Linux Next and mainline and stable. And the results from that are sent to the main mailing lists and also to the subsystem mailing list. And uh, I actually worked with Hans initially to, to get that to work. Um, there are still a few things to improve. Um, so we didn't really have to change anything in the infrastructure to work with the video for Linux subsystem. And I think that was normally that that shouldn't be needed. So basically all we need to do is add specific tests. Uh, so recently we started adding tests for real time Linux. So we just add some test definitions or reuse some test definitions from other projects like the Linear OL KFT. They have some definitions already which we can reuse. Um, and we run that so we can configure which kernel branches to test on which platforms and what to do with the results. So for SCSI, well, if we have some tests to test the, um, uh, the maybe, I don't know if you want to test block devices or more lower level, like directly talk to the SCSI drives. If you have some tests for that, we can make a um, uh, user file system or whatever works best and have some devices with SCSI drives and run things on them. You can, um, I mean, one ICW, Kernel CI as a project doesn't directly manage the hardware. Uh, some members have a test lab, like Colabra has a test lab, Bailey has a test lab, and CIP and many others, also some that are not members. So wherever you're coming from, you can have your own test lab uh, and run tests and submit results. Well, you can use the kernel CI builds, run it on your platform, and send the results to kernel CI. And if someone else wants to also run SCSI tests, they can do that in their own test lab. Okay, now I have another question from Chris. Maybe one question. Some time ago, there was a way to search for test results in a specific lab uh, on the dashboard via the web UI. It seems this feature is gone now. Um, um, there was a change in the, um, in the web front end to um, move the focus from boot testing to functional testing so we could have a lot more results. Um, however, the the way the web uh, front end was designed was very um, uh, idiosyncratic, I should say, like everything was very special. special. So when we made that move, we simplified things as well. So the plan now is to have a better web dashboard, which would be more flexible. So we don't have to handcraft every single possible search view and stuff like that. Um, so the short term plan if something like that is really needed, we can probably uh, add a feature for it, but it's basically infinite the number of ways you can search the data. So we don't want to uh, spend endless time <laughs> trying to implement everything. So right now it's a bit more um, uh, simplified, uh, but maybe maybe you can send an email to the mailing list like uh, kernelci at groups.io. And if you have, um, if you can explain why that's important to you. Also, we're trying to gather some user stories for making a, a new web dashboard. So if you explain how that works in your workflow, like you want to see just the results from the platforms in your lab, maybe, maybe that's what you want to do. It, it would be great if you can explain that and just put it in a small email. I hope that helped. <laughs> um, Tim, what is the relationship between kernel CI project and Lava project? And does kernel CI have non-upstream changes to Lava? Do Lava people participate in kernel CI? Um, so kernel CI is independent from Lava. 
Lava is a project run by Linaro uh, to, um, um, to basically provision some uh, platforms and run some tests on these platforms. It has um, an API, so you can remotely uh, send a definition of what you want to run, like here's the, you know, here's the URL to a kernel, URL to file system, and some YAML definition of the test you want to run, and it will run it and send you the results. So you can use it like, like that as a, as a service. And that's exactly what kernel CI is doing. Um, there are other labs that are not Lava. Uh, so every, every um, you know, labs are managed by people outside of the kernel CI team. The kernel CI team only deals with the uh, the core pipeline, sort of thing that will trigger builds and trigger tests to run in labs and put the results on the web front end and in a database um, and send email notifications. But when uh, when a lab goes down or a device goes, goes offline, that's not kernel CI's responsibility. That's the responsibility of the people running the labs. If you go on the kernelci.org web front end, you can see that there's like eight or nine maybe 10 labs um, on, on stable, there's more people testing stable. So you have like uh, 10 different labs. Um, most of them are Lava, but some are not Lava. You can create your own, you can submit your own results if you want to. Uh, of course, some people contribute to both, like I'm a co-maintainer of Lava as well, although I don't contribute too much right now. Uh, and but there are, there are people who do only Lava, people who do only only kernel CI. You don't have to do both. They are separate things, really. Lava could disappear one day, and we could still have kernel CI, <laughs> which is be doing things differently. Um, now, Guy, other projects beyond Linux are also graduating and doing more CI and automated testing themselves, which really helps exercise this tech more completely, Mesa CI comes to mind. Yeah, okay. Uh, is there any documentation on how to write those custom tests and how to, okay, so yeah, actually we've just um, almost finished writing a guide for that. It's already, some part of it has been merged. Um, let me put the link here. So, it's kind of maybe easiest to do this in Lava, but again, if you already have your own test system, you can use your own test system instead. Um, and we'll work out the, the plumbing <laughs> to make it work. So I'll just put a link to the documentation. Yeah, so there's an example there that's based on Lava and, and DebOS, which is a tool to create um, a Debian-based file system. So that's to run on on like small um, hardware, well, not really small, not necessarily small, but on development boards, where you create, um, create a file system image and it will be running there. If you run on a more virtual platform, you could use um, you know, a VM image or, or Docker, or it depends what test you want to run. Okay, they're open hardware projects for SD card multiplexing. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Sounds like uh, we have a, a new kind of tests being designed here <laughs> with SCSI drives. Well, there's, there's, there have been some talks about um, uh, uh, MFD, uh, you know, memory devices, uh, like uh, flash memory, basically. Maybe some tests will be relevant to both, I'm not sure, but slightly higher level ones will probably be like block layer tests. Uh, considering that now KCIDB is storing a lot of data, is there a plan to explore that? Uh, that's the first question, so quick answer is yes. Uh, what are kernel CI plans for this volume of data, machine learning? data analysis, do you already have some ideas about which kind of information could be useful to extract? So in the short term, we want to use that to generate um, a common email uh, to report all the testing that is being done on uh, on the upstream kernel. 
Um, you'll see on kernel mailing lists uh, for one kernel revision, you might get four or five different emails. They'll be testing things in a slightly different way. Um, and that's, you know, if it keeps growing like that, it's gonna be uh, counterproductive and causing more <laughs> more headaches than, than, uh, than, than uh, as, can be a kind of a, a bit of a disservice if you have to compare all these things and try to um, assemble them to get the, the bigger picture. So having a single database and a single email makes everybody's lives a lot easier. So that's, that's more like the short term thing. And longer term, we can do things exactly like you've described. So we can do, it's really like big data analysis. Um, we can do machine learning to maybe detect when, um, when a patch is more likely to cause a problem, uh, or I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done. We're, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> uh, we can also, of course, do things in the middle, uh, things that are not too complicated, but slightly more com uh, computer, um, computation intensive, such as uh, looking for trends. So if we want to make a if we capture collect data for a long time like for two or three kernel releases we can see how things evolve see if there's you know more, more bugs in rc1 than rc2 that's the kind of thing you would expect um and then uh but see really how that evolves and see if kernel ci has an impact on it uh so that's the kind of uh, thing we want to to find out but um, understanding what we can do with the data is part of uh, part of dealing with the data so we don't have all the answers yet if you have some ideas it, it would be great to share them um, so Kevin says there's yeah there's another another talk exactly yeah thanks Kevin for mentioning that there's a talk on Wednesday uh, about how to how to test things with kernel CI is there an alternative to uh, to Lava to bring your hardware? Yes, so you can use, in principle, you can use any test system uh, you want. So um, normally the first thing to do would be to detect when a new kernel CI build, uh, well, a new kernel CI uh, build binary is available. So if you have uh, an x86 board or an M64 board or something uh, with a specific specific dev config you're looking for, you need to um, monitor for when kernel CI produces one. We're working on a way to notify uh, labs um, so they don't have to keep looking. <laughs> but right now it's possible to uh, what, what labs are doing now, labs that are not Lava, they are checking every now and again if there's a new build. If there's a build, they download it and run some tests and do whatever they want with it um, and then produce some results. And then there's, um, there's an API and a tool uh, called KCI Data, which you can use now to submit your results in a, in a simple YAML format. And um, okay, there is a kernel CI REST API can be used to submit results. Yes, exactly. Also, uh, we have a shared Google Doc where we can put some notes. Uh, I've put the link in the um, in the in the schedule uh, sites description for this talk well i'll copy it here again i haven't put anything there yet but i'm planning to copy some some uh, some of the, the things we've discussed here and feel free to add things there as well We have the link now.
any more questions? I wonder how many people here are already familiar with kernel CI, whether you whether you read email reports re regularly. Oh, we have a question. Uh, is it also possible to use LabGrid for hardware testing? Yes, it's possible. Um, I don't think any anybody is using LabGrid for kernel CI right now, but it's a discussion I've had uh, with a few people before. And uh, yes, so you know what I explained a few minutes ago about um, uh, detecting when there's a new kernel CI build available and downloading it and running your tests, you could be doing that with LabGrid. So as long as you know when the build is available, then you feed that into your LabGrid system and then it produces some results and you need to have some way of um, uh, um, forwarding these results with the KCI data tool to, the, um, to kernel CI. Uh, you can also, um, you can also set up your complete own CI system, like make your own builds from the your, the kernel versions you care about and submit the results to the common uh, database. If you want to be more autonomous, that's another way of doing it. So it depends how integrated you want to be. Uh, so yeah, the glue is basically, <laughs> so like I said, there's two ways. Uh, the, the more integrated way, like if you want to be like a Lava Lab, you need to detect when the build is available, when there's a new binary, and you feed that into your system, and then you need to have a way to send the result. Uh, there's already the tool in the API to send a result. So as long as you have a handler whenever your test finishes, then you can forward it. If you want to be less integrated and not, if you don't want to wait for kernel CI builds, if you want to make your own builds at your own pace, uh, then you can do that and submit the results to the common reporting database to KCIDB. The kernel builds are not specific to uh, to lab. Um, of course, on, with ARM, you have a lot of dev configs that are tailored to one family, like you have Exynos dev config for Exynos platforms. But the, the kernels are, you know, apart from these special cases, the uh, the kernels are really generic ones. So if you build ARM64 dev config, that should work on any uh, ARM64 platform supported in uh, mainline Linux. And same thing for x86. Uh, and with ARM you have Mel TV7, so these are the, the main ones we built. If you look on the um, on the kernel CI website, you can see um, easily that uh, some um, with a single build, sometimes you can have, say like an ARM64 build, you can have really like hundreds of tests. So I'm picking one here that's from Amlogic. So I just picked a, an ARM64 build here. So you can see the details of the build. And also there's a table at the bottom with all the tests that were run. Um, so you can see it was run on a, well, there's a bunch of KMU, but it was run on Raspberry Pi and a couple of Chromebooks and uh, a Pine H64 platform as well. Um, and a rock chip platform. So these are all completely different kinds of hardware, but they're all ARM64 and they're all supported in mainline and they all work with the same dev config. They have a different uh, device tree, but that's coming from the same build. Oh, I see, sorry, I was typing. Okay. And like, actually, I think that is uh, one um, particularity of kernel CI because it's really just building upstream kernel. It It's trying to be as generic as possible. Whereas when you have uh, CI systems that test products, then it will be uh, building a very, spe a very specific dev config that's tailored for the product to have just the things that are needed to optimize it for, for the product, optimize it in, in size and everything. Um, and it's useful to gather these results as well because 
if you combine all that, all the products being tested, all the distros being tested, all you know, every use case, every slightly more vertical integration or even complete vertical integration, if you combine all these together, you have a huge uh, covering, uh, a huge test coverage. Uh, because the uh, the ARM64 dev config is not uh, all uh, mod config, it's not uh, all ES config, it's just uh, the default one, which you know, on some platforms it boots and you have a login prompt, but maybe maybe a GPU driver will not be turned on or maybe uh, some other feature will not be uh, enabled and then you don't execute all the code paths. And trying to build for all these things is, is difficult. <laughs> and there's uh, some other projects uh, trying to do that we're working with as well. But it's, you know, the project, uh, the, the Linux kernel is a big project and testing it is also a big project. We need to come up with uh, a way of doing it that matches the complexity of the kernel and that can only be done by having uh, the same number of people who work on the kernel as the number of people who test the kernel. <laughs> so for a, like there's a main mainline kernel, we, we have the native test for testing it uh, in kernel CI. And if you're a product, uh, product um, an OEM, you make your own products, you have your test system for your product and you can contribute the result to kernel CI. And that, that's the way it scales, basically. Okay, thank you. I don't know how much time I have left, like 10 minutes left, I think. Yeah. How long are the kernel CI test image artifacts kept for? Um, yeah, sorry, I've missed another question before. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Um, the, the builds are, the build results are currently kept for, I think four weeks. Um, we could leave it for longer if we had more storage, that's one thing we could do. But in practice, it hasn't really been very uh, useful to keep them for more than that because um, normally if there's a problem, a bug that people want to fix, um, having versions older than four weeks would mean it's a bug that's been there for more than four weeks and then you can just rebuild all the kernels if you need something uh, more ancient. Uh, however, the, but the test results, the metadata, everything that's in the database, we're not erasing it at all right now. Uh, we might have to archive some of it or do something else for performance reasons, but we're not planning to delete that. So all the test results to know, you know, know when builds failed, all the warnings and the build logs. Uh, no, build logs might get discarded, but at least you know the warnings that were there and all the test results, which tests passed and failed and regressions, everything like that um, is kept in the, in the database forever, as long as we can. But normally, you know, we, we can keep that forever. What are the benefits for project members? Yeah, I've put this on one slide. Um, I think the main, uh, the main, uh, benefit from a, a Linux Foundation project member um, is that it's um, it's a way for um, it's a way to concentrate the efforts uh, and get the, the best chances of having um, a central system to improve the quality of the of the upstream Linux kernel. So um, it's it's. <laughs> You know, like if every member have their own test system and they try to work together, kernel CI provides a framework around that. Uh, and we provide infrastructure and we uh, provide a coordination for it. So uh, I think that's the best incentive. If you're not a member, you can also uh, contribute. You can send your test results. You can discuss, you take part in discussions. You can contribute to the code. You can do a lot of things, um, but of course we need resources uh, like servers we need um, we need some budget as well um, to uh, there are many things we that well so far we haven't spent too much money <laughs> to be fair but it's because we've just started um, 
but this is uh, you know some things come with a cost um so if we don't have services if we don't have like you know for example servers if they were not provided to us directly by members we would need to pay for them so having a budget for it is also um, a solution that's just a very basic example um so having members um benefits the project and by benefiting the project you get normally <laughs> you get um improved quality of the upstream kernel if you rely on the upstream kernel for your own product then it means you have less things to worry about downstream and that's the that's the big win so all the tests you're doing on your downstream kernel if you have them running in kernel ci uh or if you test um, stable or mainline and you submit your results, then it will be reported uh, to the community uh, and get fixed. So you don't have to uh, to deal with so many issues downstream. I hope that was clear enough. <laughs> Okay, I'll copy a few more things to the document. And uh, if you think of a uh, question after this session, you can always add it there actually. It's uh, it's more of a like brainstorming document. And uh, maybe we'll make a, a blog post on the Kernel CI website with it at the end, uh, or at least a few uh, highlights. Yeah, thanks, Guy. I'll read um, read out Guy's answer just in case um, in case it's not recorded. Um, the project's ability to deal with all the data being collected and making sure it's enabling and supporting subsystem maintainers really depends on more member companies joining. Uh, there's this, a slide in, in my slide deck with uh, the members we have now. Um, we don't have that many. It's, we're still we still only have the founding members uh which is great but yeah of course we can, there's a lot more people around in uh, a lot more companies and organizations in the kernel ecosystem um the project would love to be able to invest into its big data and Guy also says improving the web ui is a project that is being explored someone mentioned some ways to search um having gone away yeah so that's how to improve search on the web front end and also, of course, improve mailing lists, uh, everything, well, improve email reports, improve the way people, uh, improve, improve users' experience, basically. Uh, are, are there any risk five hardware in kernel CI? Yes, yes, we have, uh, I see we have Bailey have uh, one board. Uh, now we've been building for risk five for a while. So let me get results from next the the basic test in kernel ci is called baseline so it's a bit like a boot test but it does some checks to see whether the kernel had any error and stuff like that so we have i've put a link to some baseline results and oh the risk five board is not there <laughs> maybe the build was broken in that next revision but yes basically um it's possible to search it uh via the soc tab so we yeah we have uh sci five okay and it was tested in mainline yeah we have high five unleashed here 
and I think it's not booting, and <laughs> then there's some hardware. <laughs> so if you know how to fix Risk Five, maybe you can take a look. So that last link I've put there's uh, you can have uh, a full log in HTML. Oh, it's not booting at all, but it used to boot. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm not following every day what's going on in that, but yes. The quick answer is yes, there is Risk Five hardware. And if you have some Risk Five hardware, you can, uh, you know, if you have a test lab, or if you don't have a test lab, you can create a test lab and connect it to kernel CI, and then uh, all these kernel builds could be run on your on your board. <laughs> And we could run all the tests on it, like suspend and resume. Uh, maybe if we want to do um, uh, LTP and KSL tests are being uh, added right now. Uh, Kevin says it's offline right now, so okay. And it should be back shortly. Thanks, Kevin. Looks like he has found something here. Yeah, he has found a passing job. <laughs> of course, table is more likely to work. I, I wasn't sure whether support for Risk Five was all uh, all merged in stable. Oh, I thought there was a link on um, on a web website. Okay, we need to improve that. Uh, let me show you the slide. So the quick answer is, yeah, you have um, kernel CI at groups.io. Okay, and then you have put a slide together with uh, some information like that. Whoa, why is it slow now? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, there's an IRC channel, uh, kernel CI, in one word, on free node. There's uh, another more uh, general uh, mailing list as well. Um, I don't remember the email. Tim Bird might know. There's another. Um, yeah, there's another email um, that's used for all the testing systems around the Linux kernel. So this one, kernel CI groups.io, is really just about this project. And if you're interested in interested in kernel CI or in testing upstream kernel in, in you know a wider way, and then there's another one which I don't remember right now. I can try to find it. It's the automated testing. Yeah, it's a Yocto project mailing list, but it's really not specific to Yocto. That's more like a um, all, all encompassing <laughs> upstream kernel test mailing list. So, thanks, Gisa. I'll read this out as well. Uh, if you work for a company that should be a kernel CI member, uh, please reach out internally. The project could really benefit in 2021 from more member companies to achieve its mission and objectives. And that's something you can see on the on the main website.
Okay, I think we're done now. So I don't know when this is going to disconnect. Um, but again, if you have any questions, you can reach out with all the things we've mentioned. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. It's been a, been a really good discussion.